In this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, common emitter amplifier with an emitter resistor added to the uh, emitter circuit. As we saw with field effect transistors, adding where we added a resistor to the source terminal, um, adding an, a, an emitter resistor is also beneficial. Now, because the emitter is no longer grounded, we're going to replace the transistor with its equivalent T model. So we've got the dependent current source alpha times the emitter current I sub E. And then we've re instead of the R sub pi resistance, we have the R sub E resistor, which is this resistance seen looking into the emitter, which then falls in series with this emitter resistor. Let's first of all calculate the input resistance R in. From KVL, we've got then that um, V in is equal to, V in the voltage here, is equal to just I sub E times R sub E, I sub E times R sub E plus R big R sub E. Recalling that I sub E is equal to um, beta plus 1 times I sub E, we can then replace I sub E here with I sub Let's see, I sub E is equal to beta plus 1 times I sub B. Let's get it right here. We can replace I sub E with that. We get then that V in is equal to beta plus 1 times I sub B times R sub E plus R sub E. Well, R in is simply the ratio of V in to I in, but in this case, I sub B is I in, so we could then calculate directly R in is equal to V in over I sub B, which is equal to beta plus 1 times R sub E plus R sub E. This is significant. You recall that one of the drawbacks of the common emitter amplifier was that it had a relatively small input resistance. But here we've got an input resistance that's proportional to beta. Beta, again, is typically a fairly large number on the order of 50 to 100 or 200. So the input resistance is equal to beta times the sum of R sub E, which is relatively small, plus this emitter resistor. So we can, we can uh, control the input resistance by adding this emitter, or this resistor, to the emitter. The output resistance, we can see just from observation, is simply R sub C. So R0 is equal to R sub C. You know, I should have pointed out, um, let's go back here, I should have pointed out that we're emitting the uh, early effect resistance R0. Of course, in this model here, R0 would be coming from the collector to the emitter, and it makes it uh, makes the back of the paper or back of the envelope hand uh, calculations significantly more complicated, because R0 is usually relatively large. It's, we can emit that without too much uh, impact. So here, then, the output resistance doesn't have the early resistance in there, and it is simply R sub C. Now let's go ahead and calculate the open circuit voltage A sub V. To do that, we see that V out is just equal to negative alpha I sub E. Let's see. V out is equal to negative alpha I sub E times R sub C. Now, noting that I sub E is equal to V in divided by R sub E plus big R sub E. We get then that V out is equal to negative alpha times V in divided by R sub E plus R sub E. So V out, the open circuit gain, A, I'm sorry, AV0, the open circuit gain, is equal to V out divided by V in. That's equal to negative alpha times R sub C over R sub E plus big R sub E. Now, a little algebraic manipulation of this can give us some insight as to what's going on here with this emitter resistor. Um, let's factor out R sub E from the denominator here so that we get then that A 
v0 is equal to negative alpha times r sub c over, we're pulling out the r sub e, so we've got a r sub e term times 1 plus r sub e divided by a little r sub e. Now if you'll recall, we had the term for the transconductance could be calculated, g sub m was equal to, one of its forms was equal to alpha over r sub e. So this term right here is g sub m, and we have then that this is equal to um, negative g sub m times r sub c, and we still have this factor of 1 plus r sub e over little r sub e down here in the denominator. Now once again, referring to this relationship that g sub m is equal to alpha over r sub e, and for large betas, alpha is very close to 1, we can then say that g sub m is approximately equal to 1 over r sub e, and then in the denominator we can replace this 1 over r sub e with g sub m, and we end up with then that the open circuit gain a v0 is equal to negative g sub m r c over 1 plus g sub m times r sub e. That's an e there, not a c. r sub e. Now let's look at this. The open loop gain for the common emitter without the emitter resistor was just equal to negative g sub m times r sub c. Adding the, the uh, emitter resistor gives us an open circuit gain of negative g sub m times r sub c divided by 1 plus g sub m r sub c. So the addition of the emitter resistor then tends to reduce the open circuit gain by a factor of 1 plus g sub m times r sub c. So there's a trade-off. We increase the input resistance, but we decrease the, over, the uh, open circuit gain. And we're going to see that that decrease in the open circuit gain is then going to manifest itself also in the uh, overall gain of the amplifier. And we'll see that right now. If we add in the load resistance, r sub l, we then have the uh, voltage gain, a sub v, do it down here, a sub v, which is equal to v out over v in with r sub l present. The only difference between this case and the previous analysis of the open circuit is that instead of r sub c, we have r sub l in parallel with r sub c. So we can then write this, that a sub v is equal to negative alpha times r sub l parallel r sub c divided by r sub e plus r sub e. Finally, let's go ahead and calculate the overall voltage gain, g sub v, which is equal to v out over v sig, again with r sub l present. So we add in the load resistance r sub l, which again is in parallel with r sub c, and go ahead with the anal analysis then. We have then that v out is equal to negative alpha times I sub E times the parallel combination of R sub C and R sub L. And recalling that I sub E is equal to beta plus 1 times uh, I sub B. This part of it is just like we did before. We have then that V out is equal to, I'm going to replace alpha with, um, first of all there's a minus sign, and then alpha is equal to beta over beta plus 1 times I sub E, but I sub E is just I sub B times beta plus 1 times R sub C in parallel with R sub L. The beta plus 1 terms here cancel. We now have V out in terms of I sub B is equal to negative beta I sub B times the parallel combination there. So we need to get I sub B in terms of the uh, signal resistance here, and we can do that with a KVL around this total loop here. We do that, we get V sig is equal to R sig times I sub B 
plus this current right here is I sub E, which we've already pointed out as beta plus 1 I sub B. So to keep it in terms of I sub B, let's say then that the current going along here is beta plus 1 times I sub B, and the voltage drop across here will be that current times the sum of those two resistances. Or we have then plus beta plus 1 times I sub B times R sub E plus capital R sub E. We factor out the I sub B terms and we have R sig plus beta plus 1 times R sub E plus capital R sub E. Substituting in this I sub B for this term right, I'm sorry, substituting, solving, solving this for I sub B, we have then I sub B is equal to V sig divided by R sig plus beta plus 1 times R sub E plus capital R sub E. Now we can substitute in this I sub B term into this expression up here, and we get then that V out is equal to negative beta times the parallel combination of the collector resistor and the load resistor times V sig divided by that denominator and we th just divided by that big old denominator right there and we get then that G sub V, the overall voltage gain is equal to a negative beta times R sub C parallel R sub L divided by that re the denominator again R sig plus beta plus 1 times R sub E plus R sub E. So let's recap what uh, adding this emitter resistor has accomplished for us. It increased the input resistance, which is a positive thing. It did reduce the gain, the overall gain, by a factor of 1 plus G sub M times R sub E. But because of the voltage division at the input, this, this uh, reduced gain factor in the voltage division at the input, it turns out that we can allow a larger range of voltages for V sig. In other words, this amplifier with the emitter resistor in it is more versatile and allows a larger range of values for V sig to be applied or to apply to the amplifier without driving it into the saturation. Now, adding this resistance, we don't necessarily have the time or within the scope of this course to go into it, but it turns out that adding that uh, emitter resistor also stabilizes the bias and it makes the voltage gain less dependent upon beta. Thus, variations in the value of beta from one transistor to the next are less troublesome for our design. And finally, it turns out that the frequency response to the amplifier is better with the emitter resistor there. But again, that's beyond the scope of our current discussion.